Did you hear about this? Once purple Iowa is becoming redder and redder, and that's not sitting too well with the Washington Post, with one reporter mocking the state as, quote, Florida of the North. Quote, Republicans in the Iowa legislature, empowered by the state's recent red wave, have embarked on an ambitious new agenda that includes a costly school choice bill and legislation targeting the LGBTQ community. A joke among state house reporters is that Iowa is becoming the Florida of the North without the beaches. Mm. Iowa Congresswoman Marionette Miller Meeks joins us now. Thanks for being with us this morning, Congresswoman. You know, I think the Washington Post is actually kind of trying to take a jab at Iowa saying that, but I would uh, argue that a lot of people would think the complete opposite because Florida is the place to be right now. People are flocking there. Well, you know, what's insulting is that in Iowa, we all think that uh, Florida is the Iowa of the South. Uh, nice. So, uh, <laughs> you know, we're, we're very happy with where we are. We had a huge uh, red wave. People wanted liberty. They wanted school choice. Uh, they want the ability to make decisions. We have a growing economy. We have done very well, the most resilient state coming out of the pandemic, thanks to Governor Reynolds' leadership. So, you know, what's fringe uh, is schools that uh, will change the pronouns of your student, your child, and help your child along a pathway of uh, gender changing, uh, surgery, puberty blockers, without telling a parent. That's what's fringe. What's fringe is, you know, schools not opening. Um, you know, uh, curriculum that's hidden from parents. Uh, so I think, you know, uh, we made it known what we were campaigning on throughout the uh, election season, and we were elected by a large margin in Iowa. Yeah. Congressman, doesn't this just demonstrate the elite liberal bubble that these media elites live in, in your D.C.s, in your New York's, in your L.A.s, especially in light of what Ashley said, where people are fleeing these Democrat-run states and flocking to Florida and maybe Iowa, like you said, in record numbers? Yeah, you just have to watch the U-Haul traffic to see where people are going. They're not going to high-tax blue states with bad Democratic government uh, that wants to lock people down, mandate uh, vaccines, uh, and then, you know, keep schools closed. So uh, when people pay their taxes in Iowa, they get a lot of bang for their buck because they have a governor who listens, a governor who pays attention, and a governor who is really looking out for them. You know, y'all may not have beaches, but you do have really good steak, so you've got that yeah, going I, for I you. Steak there, my <laughs> number one trip there. Uh, now to this, the CEO of TikTok is making his last-minute appeal to Americans before testifying in front of the committee, of your committee tomorrow. Take a listen to this. Some politicians have started talking about banning TikTok. Now, this could take TikTok away from all 150 million of you. I'll be testifying before Congress later this week to share all that we're doing to protect Americans using the app and deliver on our mission to inspire creativity and to bring joy. Congressman, your reaction to this kind of last ditch effort by the C CEO? Well, I think certainly we have a lot of concern with TikTok. As you know, it's uh, banned, prohibited on federal devices. And, you know, it's uh, an uh, app that uh, has an algorithm that's based on surveillance data. So. We need to get that information. Energy and Commerce is leading the way on this. You know, do they follow your uh, keystrokes? Do they uh, collect passwords? What data? What facial recognition uh, data and voice data are they collecting? And is that going to the Chinese Communist Party? So we need to get the answers on that. So first and foremost is, you know, do we need to uh, ban TikTok in the United States? What's it doing to our children? And then the second thing is we need to look forward to the future so that no app or computer programming spies on American citizens again. And energy and commerce is leading the way. In the end, Congresswoman, will TikTok be completely banned in the USA? Uh, it's very possible, but, you know, there are individuals who are coming to Congress. Uh, uh, Mr. Chu will be uh, giving uh, witness testimony to us. And so uh, we'll go through that process. And they need to assure us and American citizens that their privacy is uh, protected. And then we need to go about the process of having a national privacy data standard. What could they tell you that would assure you that, you know, our privacy is protected? They would have to show demonstrably, and, and we have some uh, tech experts that are on our committee uh, but they would have to show demonstrably that uh, information is not going to the Chinese Communist Party, that they have uh, guardrails and blockades uh, for collecting data, collecting keystrokes and uh, passwords, that they're not using surveillance data, and that they're not feeding certain data to children in the United States and other data to children in China. 
So I think they've got, it, it's a long uphill climb uh, in order to prove that. And I think there, this is a bipartisan issue. So I actually think it's one of those rare times that you will see uh, members of both parties agreeing on what needs to be done. And whether that's breaking apart um, TikTok or banning TikTok, you know, those are decisions that we're going to have to make right. based upon the testimony we have. But there's tremendous concern right now. Congresswoman Marionette Miller-Meeks, we appreciate your time and insight this morning. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilney. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.